a word of advice. Do not watch Boku Dake while you're in your university student center. It's kind of tough to control your reactions while you're in public. And Boku Dake is one of those shows that kind of just wants to, kind of makes you just want to punch a hole in your laptop at times. And not being able to shout at the screen, it takes a little bit of fun out of things, you know? Regardless, Boku Dake, another revival this week, thank goodness. I thought we would be getting one, but I just wasn't sure whether it would be this week or next week. Just like get a bit of Sadhguru in prison first, talking to the investigators, maybe talking to Yuki. But we just went straight back into the past. Not without getting yet another and even more infuriating smirk from the killer. <laughs> but this is Sadhguru's last revival. Not because of any restrictions on his abilities, I don't think. But just because once he is in prison, he is not going to get out. He is not going to get another chance. And the killer is really one at that point, as what Sasuke is being framed for is probably going to put him in line for execution. Please don't let it be. So last chance, and he is absolutely desperate this time. This episode is titled Out of Control. And it really, really fits. First of all, the situation is escalating, and Satoru is losing all of his chances. The entire affair is just slipping out of his control. But two, and probably more significantly, Satoru himself has decided to throw all caution to the wind. As he says, anything is better than Hinazuki dying. Anything. And on one hand, his dedication is completely understandable and quite admirable, really. I mean, I'm sure that most of us would probably do anything to protect Kaio ourselves at this point. But it really does bring out something unpleasant in him, like the moment where he shows us that he is willing to kill Hinazuki's mother to protect her. In that moment, it really, it's an obsession. It's something unhealthy and something that could be and maybe is just a little bit already twisted. I don't really want to see you take that direction, you know? But what really matters right now is Kenya. Like we got some great character development for him this episode. Like he and Satoru, they work together so 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 well. Like he had finally confronts Satoru over his changes in behavior since since the revival, and Satoru confesses that he is a superhero, and he is trying to save Hinazuki. Shiro Amiya, round two. <laughs> but Kenya essentially goes along with him, and kind of keeps him in check, making sure that his desperation, his willingness to do anything, doesn't hurt him or the people around him. And he just provides a sense of restraint and acts as a voice of reason, which is something that Satoru really needs right now because it's easy, it'll be easy for things to get out of hand. His desperation, like I said, it's understandable, but it is potentially very, very dangerous. But on another note, it's just great to see a friendship between the two boys, like when uh, Yashiro sensei sent them out in the hall just for being late to class. I'll admit, I laughed like their faces, the creepy eye thing, I don't know. Sometimes heroes get the short end of the stick indeed. That being said, I still do think that Kenya's perceptiveness is just a little bit suspicious. Like, he just, he still acts so much more mature than his age. Like, if this isn't addressed, I would probably actually even go so far as to identify this as a minor flaw in the writing of the series. One of the very, very few that I've noticed at this point. Just because 11-year-olds... They do not ordinarily speak like he does. Like, I have a 12-year-old brother, I know. But then again, we don't really know his background or anything like that, so just hopefully it'll be explained. Because only then will I be at peace with his character. And I, I really want to, because he's great. And I just love him. Also, the winner of the uh, best pickup line of the season goes to Sasaru. Would you mind if I abduct you right now? Just like... Smooth, Satoru. But she says yes, so hey, why not? But yeah, that's Satoru's plan. Take Hinazuki away from her mother, of course, who's a danger to her. 
and away from her home where the killer knows her location. Her disappearance draws attention. Check on her several times a day, earning his own, his own mother's suspicions, which is mostly interesting to see how that develops. But still, it's like a lot of cuteness this episode, I'm not gonna lie. I was, I was delighted to see, just like Kyle is incredibly happy in the bus that they're riding her in. Satoru and Kenya constantly at her side, and even Hiromi is in on it. And then we have an interesting scene. Satoru plays the hero card again. If we find out, I take the blame for abducting her. But Kyle says no. I can say that I put you up to this. You can't be blamed for kidnapping me when I was when I say I was the one who ran away and you're just hanging out with me, you know? It's just like it's kind of interesting that Sasaru isn't going on with this hero business on his own anymore. Like that's sort of like the default hero mindset, you know? And here we have it just being flipped on its head. Just even the change that comes with relying on Kenya's aid really transforms the situation. And Satoru probably can't win this on his own. But with them, maybe. And then the cliffhanger. A guy, presumably the killer, walks in on a sleeping Hinazuki in the middle of the night. Boom, credits. Now I love that ending theme, but I have never been so upset to hear it. I don't know, there was just something particularly awful about this one. Just how short it was. The fact that we, Hinozuki is presumably dead notwithstanding. Just like the whole scene was less than, what, 20 seconds? Most of the other cliffhangers we get, we get a little bit of a scene around it. But this one was, no, was straight out of left field death. Truly cruel. Now, I am not quite sure if this is really going to be quite that simple. Like, my raw emotional response says, oh, She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Hinozuki is dead. Oh, God, just leave her alone, killer. But the other half of me says, This is Satoru's last chance. She can't die so soon. Like, the story would just hit a dead end if that were the case. Yeah, I mean, either way, I don't really see how the rest of this is going to play out, but still. And if I were writing this, I'm just going to give a little bit of a scenario here. I would have the guy who walked in at the end be the real killer, yes. But not do anything yet. I don't know, just confirm Hinozuki's location, keep tabs on the whole situation so he can manipulate it at a later time. I mean... He can't really act right now, anyway, because he can't frame Yuki anymore thanks to Satoru's intervention, which is one aspect of going out of control and actually found quite smart. And then or maybe he could even res rescue her. And just like doing so, he assures others of his innocence. Regardless, I don't think it's going to be quite as simple as her dying right then and there. Oh! And one last thing. Regarding the time that Satoru re-entered the past, it was pretty well into his first run as Hinazuki's friend. He didn't really need to redo a lot of it, meaning probably that everything prior to that point he did correctly in order to circumvent the killer's actions. The question then is, where did he begin to make mistakes, or maybe just in what areas did he not do enough? Of course, Satoru can't really know, so now he's just really doing everything he can. But you do wonder if he's missed things already, especially considering how like versatile and adaptable we know the killer to be. Like last time, Satoru essentially saved Hinazuki from her original death. It's that the killer went after her in a different way. And in a way that Satoru, having no idea what to expect, could not have circumvented. And I would imagine that the killer is going to act in a different way this time. He saved her from both her original death and now her second death. But as for what the third one may be, none of us really know. We're completely in the dark at this point. Asatru, it, he recognizes this. And now it's a game of who, Satoru or the killer, can outsmart the other, not knowing where the future will lead. Or, well, 
Satoru does no, sort of know what the distant future will be if he fails, but that doesn't really help the situation at all. It does not help him beat the killer, considering that that is the future where the killer won. <sighs> it better not happen. It better not happen. It's like, I care way too much about these guys right now, and this villain, he's too vile, even for me, to want to see more of him, And which is weird, because I love looking at it, studying villain characters. This one, I just wanted to see him thrown in prison until he dies. Until then, we can only really hope, you know? But Hinosuke Kaya must be protected. That is all. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.